does. That's why we're here this morning. Because I need the Lord. Do you need the Lord? I need the Lord, and we all need the Lord. Even those who are walking on the streets out there who do not know that they need the Lord, they need the Lord. They need the Lord. This morning, we will look at the topic, Lift Up Your Heads. Uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 28. We will start there. Luke 21, verse 28. And I deliberately did not give the audiovisual, the text. I wanted you to open your Bibles today. <laughs> Sometimes we forget to open the Word. You know, we see it there, and, but we can't. I want you to find it in the Word <laughs> this morning. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, joy of nigh. What are these things? When you see these things begin to happen, begin to come to pass, look up because your redemption, joy of nigh. Let us pray. Our Father, Help us to look up. Help us to have the eyes to see these things. Help us to have the heart to recognize the times in which we are living. And help us, Lord, to have the wisdom to make good decisions to walk with you and to share the gospel message. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And when you see these things, over the past few weeks, we have heard of this Hurricane Harvey coming, coming. It may touch on South Texas, but somehow the hand of God steered it away, but it landed in other places. And it rained for three days. And within those three days, Houston and other places were flooded. Houses covered, cars covered, businesses covered, lives lost because of the rain. People knew that the rain was coming. They knew that a storm was coming. But there were some who said, I am not leaving when they were told to leave. And so the Authorities had to give, give them markers and said, write your name and your birth date on your hands and social security on your body so that if you were to die, we will know who you are. Because they insisted on not leaving. In Genesis chapter 6, God told Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth with a flood warn the people and for 120 years Noah preached and as we said I said in previous sermon he preached the same sermon for 120 years I am going to destroy the earth change turn to me they all knew the flood was coming. They all heard the message. They all heard the warnings. But only Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wife and their, their, their wives went into the ark. They all had the opportunity to be saved. They all heard the message for the day. And the message, the present truth for that time was a flood was coming. 
people in Houston and its environs heard that a, a storm was coming. My friends, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Because the text says, and when these things, what are these things, begin to come to pass, look up. When should I start looking up? How can I know that these things, and what are these things? In the previous verses, Jesus pointed out what these, these things are. First, in verse 9 of chapter 21, it says, Wars and commotion. Have we heard of wars and commotion? Every day we hear of a nation uh, threatening to do bad things. North Korea is on the radar right now. They're firing missiles and they're speaking bold words. Wars and commotion. It says, when we hear of these things, be not terrified. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Many people today are afraid. Then it says in verse 10, nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. In verse 11 it says, earthquakes shall be in diverse places. We will have famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Have we seen all those things? But before these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. Have we seen persecution in our world today have you experienced persecution you may not be experiencing experiencing it in a great manner but if you were to live as a child of god you would experience it i'm telling you if you were to stand for truth you will experience persecution many people today are dying because they are standing for christ Verse 17, it says, And he shall be hated and of all men for my name's sake. But then I love verse 18. But there shall not a hair on your head be on your head perish. There shall not a hair on your head perish. When these things happen, my friends, God's people will be secure. Verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and moon and the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations and with perplexities, the sea and the waves roaring. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. My friends, people are not afraid of what is happening. Happening, They are afraid of what they think will be coming. Many are af afraid today, not because of what is happening to them, but because of what they foresee or what they perceive to be coming. The Bible is always right. But then one day they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And that is what we look forward to. To see Jesus coming in power and great glory. And when we see these things come to pass, look up. This looking up what does this looking up mean? Is it that I see all of these things, you know, when I was a boy and, and the preachers preached Revelation, um, Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, when they preached these, these passages, I looked around me and said, I have time. 
I don't see anything happening. I don't see some of these things happening as yet, so I have some time. But I'm looking around right now and I see all of these things happening. It tells me that I don't have any time. So that means I should be looking up. But does it mean that I should walk around with my head looking up all the time? Looking up to see that little cloud. Is, is that what I should be doing? What should I be doing? What does this looking up mean? It's mean? It means that I should be ready. It means that I should be getting others ready. It means I should be delving into the word of God. It means I should be living as a child of God. When God told Noah to be ready, he started building the boat. He didn't sit around and say, okay, Lord, I know you're going to destroy everything. I'm going to sit and wait, and then you'll just take me to glory. Is that what Noah did? Noah built the boat. Noah built the boat. When Lot was in Sodom and the angels went down there and said, I'm going to destroy the city. Did Lot sit around? Lot went and tried to, to encourage his children to come out. And then the angels had to take him by the hand and take him out of Sodom. My friends, be, looking up means that we need to be ready. And we need to be helping others to be ready for that glorious day when Jesus will come. What time are we living in? In Daniel, you know, every time, I've, I've said this many times, and I think a good teacher will repeat the, the work so that the students will hear it over and over again. My son uh, was given a program uh, at the school and it has all the subject matter on it. But the program is that ever so often it will go over what he just read. And so as he would read something, it would pop up again what he read five minutes ago to bring back to his memory what he, he read. And it is a great tool to remind him of what he read. And because of that, he is learning the subject matter. And so God wants us to go over some of these things so that we will keep them in the forefront of our minds, so that we will not forget. Because when we forget, we start stumbling. And so what time are we living in? In Daniel chapter 2, we looked at that image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw in vision in his dream and we see my friends that Babylon came and went Medo Persia came and went Rome the nation the powerful nation came and went pardon Greece came and went Rome came and went and the ten nations of Europe are all that's left and the Bible tells us that that image that he saw, a stone was cut out without hand, smote that image, and that stone became a mighty mountain that filled the whole, the whole earth. And that represents the coming of Jesus, setting up his kingdom. We are on the borders of the promised land, my friends. In Daniel chapter eight and, chapters 8 and 9, we look at a 2300 day prophecy and we see that that prophecy ended in 1844 where Jesus has entered the most holy place and as we studied in the past in the sanctuary system the day of atonement the final day of judgment was when the priest entered the most holy place that is a time in which we're living in Oh, friends, if we would only contemplate the Word of God and see where we are. Many people are afraid today because of the flood in Houston. But as 
Martin said earlier, there are many places in the world where we have floods, we have fires, we have earthquakes that are happening, but they are close to home. That's why we're thinking about it. Things are happening all over the world. Open our eyes, open your eyes, friends, and see where we are. And dedicate yourself to the Lord, to walk with God, to give Him everything that you have. As was stated earlier, many people had their house and that was all they had, and now they have nothing. Because there's only devastation. All their memories are lost. All their pictures are lost. All the things that they cherished are lost. Not all they have are the, is the clothes on, them, on themselves. That's all they have. Let us not place our treasures where moth and rust doth corrupt. But let us place it in the heavenly places where thieves do not break through and steal. Look up, friends. Be ready. And they say, lift up your heads for your redemption. Joy is nigh. You want to leave this world? I'm ready. I'm ready to go. As a matter of fact, I'm ready to fly. Because I'm going to fly, be flying. Because the dead in Christ will rise and we who are alive shall be caught up together with them in the air. So we are going to fly. Fly to glory. It will be an exciting time when Jesus comes. It will be a glorious time when Jesus redeems his loved ones. We will exchange the cross for a crown, friends. We will exchange this ragged robe that we have on for the robe of righteousness. We will exchange the, immor the mortal for the immortal. Oh, friends, what Jesus wants to give to us is beyond anything that we can imagine. Our pilgrimage will be over. Our pilgrimage will be over. As the children of Israel walked through the desert for 40 years, my friends, they looked forward to the day when they would enter the promised land. And one day it finally came. Before they could look over because the... the Jordan River separated them from the promised land. They could look over into the promised land. They were on the borders. But they were not yet into the promised land. And that's where we are. We can look over into the promised land based on Bible prophecy. We're almost there. But then one day, the, the high priest will walk through into the water. And the waters will part. And we will walk over into the promised land. The gates, the pearly gates will be opened. And I think Jesus will be there to welcome us. As I walk through the gate, he'll say, welcome, my child. He won't even say, and so welcome. No, he will open his arms and say, welcome and give me a big hug. Welcome to glory. Will there be no more death? Welcome to glory. Will there be no more tears? Welcome to glory. Will there be no more pain? No more sorrow. We won't be ashamed. But we will be confident in Jesus. What is our attitude? Seeing that we are on the borders of the promised land. Where are our eyes? Are our eyes looking out into the dark world? Bible tells us, my friends, look up. Because when we look up, glory will be ours. Let us look up this morning. Because Jesus wants a people who are ready. 
He's coming back for people who will not be running to the rocks and to the mountains, but he will be running, to, he will be coming back for a people who will say, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Who wants to be a part of that? Praise God. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you've gone to prepare a place for us and you're faithful to your promise. You're coming back. Almost there. Help us just to wait just a little more. But as we wait, Lord, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to keep our hearts focused on you. Delve into your words. Commune with you in prayer. Submit our lives to you. Walk with you. Share you with others. Live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please all stand up as we sing our closing hymn, We Have This Hope. 